Now, speaking of finding those diodes, um, and I don't really want to complain about this kit. I actually think from what I've seen so far, it's very well done. This is a, a they're nice, it's nice hardware quality, but uh, I do see, I haven't opened this bag yet, that all of the parts are just laying loose um, in this bag, which means that there's going to be 37 of these diodes just sort of flopping around in the breeze. Uh, when I when I cut this bag open so uh, be careful when you do that I'm gonna slice it up here somewhere looks like most of the diodes are up here try to draw them out uh, and get them separated and I'll come back uh, after we're done with that okay we're back after some um, bumping and judicious repositioning of the camera so I think things are looking okay uh, over there as you can see down here in the corner, uh, maybe or maybe not, I have a whole pile of these diodes. Um, and um, I, I don't know if I have all 37 of them. I think maybe there's a few more that I saw floating around in the bag down there. But I certainly have enough to get started here, and I probably have enough to do the 30 across the switches here at the, at the bottom. Um, these are 1N4148 diodes, which is a standard small signal um, switching diode. And... Um, as the instructions say, diodes are, um, I guess, polarized is the term that most people would use, but they have an anode and a cathode, which means that they have a positive end and a negative end, and they must be oriented correctly on the board. If you look at the diode, it's probably very hard to see on the camera, but there's a black stripe around one end, and then there is a stripe marked on the board, um, and those have to be oriented together in order for the diode to conduct, conduct properly uh, in circuit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these diodes, however many of these there are here, and I'm going to bend the leads over and insert them on this side of the board, on the front side of the board. The instructions say all of the components except for the um, Raspberry Pi header go on the front side of the board. It goes on the back. Uh, and so we're going to put them on the front side of the board and then um, flip the board over, make sure we keep them seated, and then solder them in on the back side. Now, um, I didn't inventory this kit when I got it. Um, I think everything that's in this kit, with the exception of these specific rotary encoders um, and, the, um, uh, and the one I see here, the uh, UDN2981A uh, that goes here, I'm, I'm sure I have somewhere around here, so I didn't inventory it. I, I should say the only other exception is um, the LEDs. I certainly, I have enough LEDs to, you know, feed a family of four for several months, but of course, different LEDs have different properties, and so we would want them to be matched so that they all have sort of the same brightness uh, across the board, and, and I probably don't have those, but anyway, I did an inventory, depending on your situation, uh, you may want to. Certainly, if I run out of 4148s, I got more of these. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my little pile down here and I'm going to start placing these 4148s across the board. I'll probably do four or five of them, flip the board, solder them, do the next four or five. Uh, you could do them all at once. There's nothing to prevent you from doing that. But uh, because they aren't soldered when you first put them in, then they may want to, to fall back out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set them against the board here sort of to get a feel for where to bend the leads. Grab the lead near where I'm going to want to bend it. Uh, and then just give the one side a bend down uh, so that it would go into the hole like this and keep the diode oriented. And see how it's, it's centered over the, uh, the mark here. You don't have to do that, of course, but I feel like it, you know, it, makes it gives it a little bit more professional, a nicer look. Bend the other side. Drop it into its uh, lead holes there, and often you'll find that it's that is a little bit tight, um, be, depending on how you have it bent. If not, you can splay the leads just a little bit to tighten it up on on the back side, and then we'll repeat this a few times. I'll probably speed the video up so you don't have to watch me do this um, a million times. It's going to get a little bit boring, and of course, after the first one, you uh, once you've got a feel for how long you want to bend those leads, you don't have to necessarily place each one against the board, you can just sort of fly them around uh, in the air up here and uh, then drop them in. But um, I'll go ahead and place a number of these, get them soldered, and then um, probably, as I said, speed up the video or just skip ahead and then we'll come take inventory again uh, after that and see what comes next.
All right, I'll bring you back in for the first board flip. I've placed five of the diodes here, and you see they're still just a little bit loose. But then we'll just flip the board over, and as you can see, hopefully, on the back side here, um, I have uh, splayed out the legs a little bit so that the diodes stay mostly in place uh, on the board. Now, some people will say, don't ever do this, because, and it's true, that on a lower quality board, if you have to do any rework, when you remove these components, you're very likely to tear out pads and traces. Um, this appears to be a pretty high quality board. I mean, I haven't soldered on it yet, but it appears to be a pretty high quality board, so I'm not real worried about that. And of course, these are very unlikely to be bad components, and I, I don't think I put them in wrong, so I'm not too uh, worried um, in this particular case, but it, it is something to keep in mind. So that once you have an in place, you wanna take your soldering iron, Place it on there for just a moment, hit it with some solder, move your soldering iron away, and we have a good solder joint on that pad. Um, I'm not going to do a soldering tutorial, there's plenty of those on the um, internet, but the key is, remember you heat up the uh, component and the board, not the solder, and then feed the solder into the joint. Give it a moment to let it flow and then remove uh, your iron. Don't leave your iron there too long because you'll, you'll burn up um, components but don't leave it there to, for too short a period of time because you won't achieve a good uh, solder joint. So I'll go ahead and solder these. I'll flip it over, I'll add some more. Uh, when we're done, we will inspect these solder joints, but for now, I'm just gonna, just gonna burn through them. Of course, when we flip the board back to the front side, there's a little bit of proof of uh, how your joints come out in that uh, if they were soldered well, then you should have just a little bit of a bubble of solder on this side that is you know, mounted nicely and looks like a good joint on the far side from where you soldered uh, as well. So these, I am pretty confident that they're gonna be okay um, connections. They may not be the most beautiful solder joints in the world. Um, we'll inspect them later and see if I want to touch them up for aesthetic reasons, but I can see from looking at the front side that they are in fact uh, at least making contact. They're good solder joints, electrically speaking. Of course, I'm over here hand bending all these leads. Uh, I, sh I will mention, of course, there, there is such a thing as a jig uh, for bending these leads. And in fact, I think I recently saw, maybe on Hackaday, um, a 3D printed parametric lead bender uh, where you just basically, you, you push the part down in, you take you know, your fingers or something, you wipe down the leads and they're just bent. Um, but I, I don't have a jig, I haven't made a jig, I just do mine. Um, by hand. Of course, there's nothing wrong with doing it either way. It just depends on how patient you are. For me, this is a hobby. If it takes me a minute to bend my leads, um, then it's, it's not the end of the world. All right, I'm finding that my, uh, my diode legs here are starting to get in my way, and I'm pretty confident about these um, solder joints. So I'm gonna go ahead and start clipping the excess leads. Again, like I said, I have, I don't know, a thousand probably, 4148. So if I have to replace a few of these, um, it's not gonna be the end of my world. Of course, I don't want to, because that takes time and effort, and I wanna see this thing going. When you're clipping these leads, it's also an excellent opportunity to make sure that there's actually solder in every one of the holes. Um, I think in, um, uh, I think it was a post, it wasn't a video, but I, uh, I looked at a uh, Televideo 910 um, terminal that actually had a joint that had never been soldered. Uh, the terminal's from, I don't know, probably the early 1980s and um, it had a bad solder joint in it, uh, or not a bad solder joint in it, it had a, a dry joint that had never had um, solder put on it. So um, when you're clipping them off, look and make sure, make sure that they're, that they were in fact uh, soldered.
Okay, that's all the diodes for the switching matrix. Um, and if we just look real quick and make sure we have all the cathodes pointed in the right direction, looks like we do. Um, there's now seven more diodes uh, right there. So there's three here, three here, and one over there um, that form other parts of the circuit. Honestly, I'm, I'm not sure what I didn't look. Um, this, yeah, I'm not sure what, I didn't look. Uh, and it's hard to tell from the traces here. The traces for these in particular are on the back side of the board. But at any rate, we got seven more of these guys to put on. I will put them on all at once. And I did have to go spelunking in the bag again. I didn't get quite all 37 of them the first time. I think I got 33 or 34 of them. Um, and th there may be some extras in the bag, I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, I was able to find 37 at any rate. Because of the way this holder is oriented, these actually kind of get in each other's way. So I'm going to have to trim them as I go. And this right here is what the braid is for. I got too much solder on that joint. I didn't like it, so I wanted to put a little more uh, flux on it. In order to do that, I used solder, which meant I got a little more solder on the joint than I wanted to see there. So just hit it with a little bit of braid, pull some of that solder off, and we're good to go. All right, I think that's the 37 diodes um, on the board. The next thing the instructions ask us to mount are the resistors. There's a dozen or so. Uh, there's some 390 ohm resistors here and a few one kilo ohm uh, resistors scattered around the board. I'll check the, the, looks like maybe there's 15 total, but I will check the instructions, see how many they're supposed to be, make sure I found all the pads, um, and then we'll place the resistors on the board and get them soldered in place too. Procedure is exactly the same as the diodes. We'll just bend the leads and drop them into the to the slots, uh, except that resistors are not polarized. You can put them in either direction. Now, I'm a little bit OCD, so uh, I like to place them so that their um, uh, tolerance bands would follow, for example, the diodes on this board. We have our cathodes down and to the right, so I'll probably put the tolerance bands uh, to the right and uh, down, but that's pure OCD. Nobody but me is ever going to notice. Okay, it looks like there are 12 390 ohm resistors in here, and in my kit, these are these blue bodied resistors. Uh, the stripes on them, they'll start with an orange, that's the three uh, on one end, and then they are 1%, so they have a brown on the other end. Uh, which is maybe a little bit confusing if you don't read resistor color codes because the other resistors are 1K, which start with a brown. Uh, so you have a brown on one end of each resistor, but in my case, the uh, 1K resistors are 5% um, tolerance uh, and have a gold um, tolerance band on the other end. So they're, they're, uh, they're easy to identify. So we have the blue 390K and the... Uh, brownish colored, tan colored 1K resistors. And so we'll just go ahead and mount those. The 1Ks, there's three here, three across the bottom, and then the 390s, there's 12 of them right here in the middle of the board. Um, so I will go ahead and mount probably one bank at a time uh, of each of those and then get them soldered in place. Again, because I'm OCD, tolerance band down here with the cathodes.
That's it for the 1Ks. Now for the 390 ohm. Um, in my kit, the 1Ks came loose while the 390 ohms came on tape like this. Of course, we don't need the tape uh, because we're not going to be loading a pick and place or anything. And um, it's a pain in the butt and it leaves goo usually on the end of the leads. So it's just as easy to just go through and clip the ends of all these leads to get the resistors off of the tape as it is to try to pull them out. And um, we have plenty of lead here, right? We, we only need a quarter inch or less on either end. Um, so there's no reason, of course, let's not lose them. Uh, so there's no reason to keep all that uh, lead hanging around anyway. Uh, so I will just trim them off the tape here and then use the remaining lead to fit them to the board. All right, again, bend the leads to length. As you've seen, I'm just eyeballing these at this point um, because I've done so many that, you know, they, they typically are about the right length. You may have seen, it may have been too fast uh, once the video is edited, but uh, some of these I bent a little bit short and I had to fiddle with them a little bit or bend them a little bit long and they wanted to cock in the, uh, um, in their placement, but you know, not enough to prevent me from getting them all in. So you don't have to be super precise. Again, a jig, you know, might be nice, but it's not necessary for a job like this. All right, there we go for the resistors. Um, now the um, the next components on this are going to be a little bit more tricky. If I remember the build order correctly, I think we do the diodes um, next. Of course, there's a ton of those, uh, and then maybe the switches. Um, and so uh, through the magic of YouTube, you won't see this, but I'm going to call it quits for the night. It's a quarter after 9 p.m. here, um, and I have some things I need to prepare uh, before I leave for work tomorrow morning. So uh, I'm going to call it quits for tonight, and we'll finish it up later. But um, so far, I would say I have probably an hour um, and 15 minutes into this build, um, and that is including messing with the camera and things like that. So um, it's, uh, it is a, not a... Um, uh, super quick build, but so far it, it's not too bad. Of course, come back and talk to me after I've soldered, uh, you know, 50 LEDs uh, or whatever this is. But so far, so good. I'm, I remain very pleased with the quality of this board. It's tinning nicely. It's it's uh, it's wetting nicely. It's soldering nicely. Uh, of course, I haven't had to remove any components. I don't know how tough the um, pads are, but but so far um, so good. So let's um, reconvene here in a little bit and start setting these LEDs. The instructions for them, they are of course uh, set off the board on these little um, standoffs. And so every one of these LEDs has to be placed through a standoff and then uh, placed onto the board uh, polarity wise because they are also polarized uh, in its little place. And then before we, because I can't even get it in there, it's gonna take forever. Uh, and then before we solder them all down, of course, then there is this LED sort of fitment board that gets them all aligned and squared and, and, and ready to go. So I think they're going to have to go in one shot. It's going to take a little while to get them prepared, and it's going to take a little while to get them lined up uh, into the right height and everything, which is what will help make the, the front board uh, look so nice. So uh, we'll come back to this in a little bit.